Science has no frontiers. We should work in science to improve health all over the world. Of course, HIV for me was not only a discovery of the virus, but also what we can do for humanity, for population all over the world. Of all the laureates here, I believe there are only three women. And one is actually Françoise Barré-Sinoussi, who discovered the link between HIV and AIDS. We will have to face a global scale epidemic. For two patients starting treatment, there is five new cases of infection, and still there is 2.7 million new cases of infection per year. Today we are. Small. I'm very inspired personally by her career, how she manages to juggle her personal life and her career as a woman, how she has managed to overcome a lot of the stigmas that are associated with her research. The, the work that you did was done in a climate that was somewhat controversial because, at least in the United States, HIV AIDS appeared first in the homosexual population. Still today that remain. From time to time when I'm taking a taxi uh, in France or in other countries, you know how taxi drivers are, they ask what are you working on and so on, and I say I'm working on HIV AIDS and they say, uh, you cannot be interested in other diseases and instead of spending your time and spending money on those people. Yeah. But those this people include, include the taxi driver because nobody is not at risk for HIV AIDS. They agree impossible. with you and it's exactly what I said. Right. Uh, they don't believe me still. Right. Uh, and I, I finished by saying, look, it's by this kind of behavior or reaction that you have, that uh, the infection is spreading. Right, and what about the information that is sometimes misconstrued, especially in, in third world nations where people don't even know that by being exposed to certain body fluids you can or cannot get AIDS or, or different hypotheses on how to cure AIDS or prevent AIDS. How do you approach those topics? <sighs> Education. Let's take the, the case of Uganda. It has been clearly shown that when the local community started to be involved, uh, after a while we saw the prevalence of infection reduced by 50%. So uh, we know it can work. My approach personally, when I go for the first time in a country, it's just to listen, mm. to talk with communities, uh, even to go to the markets, you know, and meet uh, the population and just try to understand. So you're saying that basically the, there won't be one solution for, for everybody. I, I, exactly, and I don't know how you feel, but even in our own country, there is diverse situation. In Washington DC, for example, the prevalence of infection is very high, 3%. It's ironic, isn't it, that the nation's capital... More than in Senegal. ...would have one of the <laughs> highest infection rates, right? Yeah. And it's, it's, it's supposed to be the, the heart of the country. Uh, how you explain this kind of situation? I, I don't know how I would explain it, but growing up in, in Canada myself, one of the biggest culture shocks I saw was moving to a country where universal health care was not available to exactly. everybody. Exactly. And I think that's also very expensive because people not only lack access to treatment, but they lack access to information. And in the end, that hurts us because you have more cases of, for example, HIV AIDS in populations that don't have access to health care. And in turn, that makes our country a more dangerous place more to vulnerable. live. More vulnerable, yeah. I'm also Bolivian, which mm -hmm, is mm -hmm. a developing nation. Sure. And I gave a scientific talk there a few years ago. But also, that's and, a population uh, that's very religious. And so how would you approach talking about HIV AIDS, condom use, safe sex in a population that supposedly 
doesn't ever have sex outside of a monogamous marriage. My advice is to, um, to start to uh, have exchanges and discussion with the younger generation because they are the future. And it's through the, them that we can change the situation. And you wrote, you wrote a letter, right, to the Pope? That's right. What, what was the, the content of that letter? What motivated you to, to do something like that? The Pope made a, a statement saying that uh, condoms were not efficient to prevent uh, against uh, HIV. Uh, we have to stop this kind of statement. I mean, it's criminal. He is destroying in a few minutes all the work done by others. What about abstinence-only education and the types of influences that that has on the spread of HIV-AIDS? I mean, this is not serious, really. <laughs> yeah. Do you think, really, that uh, uh, it's possible for a whole life to, uh, uh, to just... follow abstinence? It's, it's okay for a while, but... <laughs> right, I, I just don't think that it's logical. The day of my wedding, I was in the lab. <laughs> I received a phone call from who became my husband <laughs> at 11.30 in the morning saying, do you think you will come? <laughs> You mentioned that you were in the lab on your, on your wedding day and that your, your fiancé had to call you to remind you to go to the church. Do you think that that event symbolizes what your career has been like, you know, very science-focused? Totally. <laughs> well, what advice do you have for, for women who are trying to pursue careers in science in the midst of a you know, social climate that's still somewhat male-dominated and where women still have roles that are expected to be fulfilled. <laughs> Select the right partner. <laughs> what if there aren't enough of those? <laughs> because I think I selected the right partner because he, he had book, a lot of humor. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, he was not surprised at all. <laughs> he knew. <laughs> he knew to call your lab. He, he knew the situation. He, he knew me very well. He knew where I was, of course, yeah. uh, and uh, he knew that if he married me, all his life will be the same. <laughs> Have you faced discrimination for being a woman in a male-dominated field? Yeah, yeah, especially in the, 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 my youngest uh, year, let's say. Did you have role models that sort of helped push you along? Few people uh, have been um, models. What about you? Do you have models? My, my mom's an engineer, and okay. just the fact that she started in, in La Paz, Bolivia, and really had to work hard to get to where she is now, is, is inspiration, because I started, you know, she started here, and I'm starting here, so I have an obligation almost to, to pursue my dream, because it's almost like she did that for me. <laughs> my, my mother was, uh, was not working. She, she was at home. And my father, it's, uh, it's among these kind of people, you know, that uh, things that women should say at home. Yeah. For me, it was uh, a pressure. And certainly, I told my father not so long ago, thank you, thank you very much. Because of uh, your uh, behavior regarding women, I said to myself when I was young, I'm going to show you what a woman is capable yeah. to do. <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> I showed you. <laughs> However, I'm not a feminist myself. Um, I think uh, it's nice to go to equity uh, in condition that uh, we keep as a criteria, excellences. If we are just taking women because they are women, uh, I'm not satisfied personally at all. I, I agree because that's the same as saying, I won't take you because you're a man. I do see more women in science these days, yet 
right now I'm the only female in my lab. And you are the only female? It's a physics lab. Yes. And so, in general, some areas still do have a large discrepancy between uh, males. It's what I found out, yeah. Uh, because in biomedical research, uh, it's the opposite somehow. She was very personable and very open with, with the answers, especially about her personal life. And it was very inspiring to hear that she basically got to the point where she is on her own motivation. Also, we talk about women in science, of course. Uh, our own experience, her young experience compared to uh, my old experience. But also because the finances just aren't there, the country cannot support research. Except if you have a For young uh, scientists like Mackie in a special field of physics where there is a very few women, I would say just be persistent to show them that women in your field can be very successful. To do exactly what you are do we are doing <laughs> right now. <laughs> I think that once I go back to Illinois, back to my lab, uh, Francoise's message will, will be one of motivation and one of really perseverance in my field, regardless of barriers. And I intend to think back on this conversation whenever I'm feeling disappointed about lab results or whenever I feel a little bit alone as a woman in science and just try to persevere through those obstacles.